Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.6.1.1 Survival and Response from the AQA A Level Biology Specification. So here's what we need to know Organisms increase their chance of survival by responding to changes in their environment. There are three types of responses in organisms that we need to know about. These include tropisms, taxis, and kinesis, and simple reflexes. For tropisms, we need to know about growth factors and how they move from growing regions to other tissues, where they regulate growth in response to directional stimuli. This brings us on to the role of indoleacetic acid, IAA, and how it affects cell elongation in the roots and shoots of flowering plants, hereby facilitating gravitropism and phototropism, and I'll explain all of this in a bit more detail further on. We should also know about taxis and kinesis and how they maintain mobile organisms in a favourable environment. Finally, we should know about simple reflexes, exemplified by the three neuron simple reflex, and how they are useful in protecting organisms. Note that you do not have to know details of the spinal cord and dorsal and ventral roots. So let's make a start. Organisms increase their chance of survival by responding to changes in their environment. These changes can be internal or external and are called stimuli, of which the singular is known as a stimulus. For example, often the purpose of a response is to keep conditions optimal for metabolism. There are three different responses that we need to know about. Tropisms, taxis and kinesis. Note that the singular of each of these is known as a taxis and a kinesis, and simple reflexes. So let's start with tropisms in plants. A tropism is a growth response of a plant to a directional stimulus. Tropisms are controlled by growth factors, which are hormone-like compounds. Growth factors are produced in growing regions, such as shoot tips, and move to other tissues where they regulate growth in response to directional stimuli. Auxins are the main growth factors, the most abundant of which is indoleacetic acid, IAA. So for tropisms, we need to know two different types of response, photo and gravitropism. So let's start with phototropism. In shoots, IAA causes cell elongation. In roots, it inhibits cell elongation. It does the opposite. So first of all, light is detected by receptors in the shoot. IAA then diffuses to the darker side. Note that it is very important to mention that IAA diffuses. Mark schemes very often will allow only answers which include the word diffuses, nothing else, and in mark schemes, this word is often underlined to emphasize this to examiners. So IAA diffuses to the darker side, so the concentration of IAA increases on this side. IAA causes cells on the darker side to elongate, meaning that the shoot bends towards the light. This is known as positive phototropism, as the shoot is bending towards the light. Note that in the roots, IAA does the opposite. It diffuses to the darker side, i.e. the underside of the root, meaning that cell elongation is inhibited here, causing the root to bend downwards. And this is known as negative phototropism. Next we have gravitropism. First, IAA diffuses to the lower side of the shoot. The concentration of IAA therefore increases on this lower side. IAA causes cells on this side to elongate, which causes the shoot to bend upwards, and this is known as negative gravitropism, i.e. we're working against the force of gravity. As before, in the roots, IAA does the opposite. It diffuses to the lower side and inhibits cell elongation here. Therefore, the root curves downwards, and this is known as positive gravitropism. Next, we have taxis and kinesis. These are simple responses that maintain a mobile organism in a favourable environment. In a taxis, an organism moves towards or away from a directional stimulus. The response can be positive or negative, i.e. if it is positive, it is towards, and if it is negative, then it is away from the directional stimulus. 
In echinesis, an organism's movement is affected by a non-directional stimulus, such as humidity. For example, the rate of turning of an organism may increase as it gets closer to the stimulus. Finally, we have simple reflexes, which involve three neurons, sensory, relay and motor neurons. First, a receptor detects the stimulus, which, remember, is a change in either the internal or the external environment. Then, a sensory neuron carries the impulse from the receptor to the relay neuron, which is located in the CNS. Note that CNS stands for Central Nervous System and consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The CNS processes information and coordinates a response. The relay neuron carries the impulse directly from the sensory to the motor neuron. The motor neuron then carries the impulse from the relay neuron to the effector. And finally, the effector carries out a response. An effector may be a muscle which contracts or a gland which secretes hormones. So why are reflex arcs so important? First of all, they result in fast responses. And this is because they do not involve the conscious part of the brain because the impulse is carried directly from a sensory neuron to a motor neuron via a relay neuron. Responses are fast also because impulses travel fast along neurons. The next feature is that responses are localized. Neurotransmitters are secreted directly onto target cells, such as muscle cells. A particular stimulus always produces the same response. And finally, the response is short-lived because the reuptake of neurotransmitter is rapid. All of these features help aid survival. For example, they can protect the body from tissue damage, they may aid with pressure or balance, or help with things like escape from predators. The response is also involuntary, meaning that you cannot consciously override it. Great, so we have covered how organisms increase their chance of survival by responding to changes in their environment. We have covered tropisms in plants, including the role of indoleacetic acid in facilitating gravi and phototropism. We've covered taxis and kinesis and how they maintain mobile organisms in a favorable environment. And finally, we have covered the protective effect of a simple reflex from receptors to sensory relay and motor neurons all the way to effectors and how they are fast, localized and short lived and how this is so important in helping with survival. Great, that would be it for now guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment. Next time we will be looking at receptors.